Good morning, dear friends. Tuesday, September 15. Once again, the Psalm, which is Psalm 100, and it speaks to us. We are his people who are the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, serve the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful song. Sing joyfully to the Lord, serve the Lord with gladness. You know, every day, no matter what we do, we're serving the Lord. We're serving the Lord. The words back there over the door. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We are disciples, as I always say, in the vineyard of life. As our former bishop used to say in Persona Christi, in the, persons, in the person of Christ. And so we are sent out into the world to serve the Lord in all the ways that you and I know we're supposed to. And I talked about that on Sunday, where it talks about how often must I forgive? 70 times. What kind of heart do we have when we serve the Lord? Do we serve the Lord with a forgiving heart, an accepting heart, a heart filled with wisdom and understanding, or are our hearts darkened by bitterness and anger and, and thoughtlessness? That's up to you and I to try to determine where we're at with those kinds of thoughts. But right here, <clears throat> serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord doesn't want people to serve the Lord begrudgingly or somehow because we think we have to serve the Lord with gladness, gladness, gladness. That's a great word, isn't it? To get up in the morning and be glad. I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad I have my wife. I'm glad I have my husband. I'm glad I have my kids. I'm glad I'm gonna get a great breakfast this morning. I'm glad because I'm looking forward to that cup of coffee. There are so many things to be glad about that why are we so often just dominated by sadness and bitterness and anger? Gladness, what a great way to go through the day. People would think we were maybe a little off our rocker. If we stood in our office and smiled, somebody said, gee, you're smiling. Yes, I'm filled with gladness today. I'm really glad, I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad that you're my coworker. They think you were a little off in the head, wouldn't they? But how often would that serve us better than some of the moods that we're in? Serve the Lord with gladness. Because when you're glad, you wanna do good. When you have gladness in your heart, you wanna Make other people glad too. You wanna to say the right things, do the right things. Serve the Lord with gladness. And we as Christians and Catholics, we do serve the Lord in all things. You can't step out the door on, on, on a Sunday morning and think you're done with church. Like it says over the door, go in peace. Go, go out into the world, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. As I always say, church is easy, life is hard because real discipleship begins out there. You get the fuel in here through the Eucharist, the wisdom of the word, you get charged up, you get everything you need, you know, but when you go out in the world, that's where you expend it all. Hopefully, my friends, let's expend it with gladness and love for the Lord and for one another. God bless. See you next time. Today's reading, the Holy Gospel, once again comes from John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas. Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. This is a beautiful gospel, especially to those of us, myself included, who are taking care of our parents. From that hour on, he took her into his home as we have grown older and our lifespans have increased, it's a wonderful thing, unless of course you become disabled, unless some chronic illness creeps into your life and the golden years don't look so golden anymore. And I've had so many people tell me that throughout my life, that now that I'm on the doorstep of it, I know exactly what they're talking about. The golden years, maybe, could be, we hope, but we don't know. So in this particular gospel, Jesus, who is in terrible agony on the cross, has one or two things yet to do. The most important of which, of course, is to go back to God the Father, is to open the way to salvation. But on the way there, of course, he forgives the thief on the cross. And he also makes sure that his mother's taken care of. His heart is filled with love for Mary. And he looks at the disciple whom he loves and behold your mother, there she is. Please take care of her. Most compassionate, wonderful thing that Jesus could possibly do
for, for Mary was to make sure that she would not want, that she would not be alone, that she would be taken care of. There's not really any powerful theology in this. It's a reminder to us to take care of the people we love, to be there for them in their moment of most grievous difficulty, to do everything we can to make sure that our parents are, are, are taken care of later in their lives. And believe me, my friends, I know for many of us that's not an easy road, but it's a road that we all go down in one way or another. So what an inspiration is this? Make sure that there is love for those around us, for those who can't take care of themselves, that others may be able to give their love in those moments of greatest need. Take care, God bless you. Take care of those close to you. And now my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the blessed sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection.